A battery produces an electric current when its positive end, called the cathode, and its negative end, called the anode, connect via conductive pathway in the battery-operated device. This pathway conducts electricity when three components, two electrodes and an electrolyte, interact. These alkaline batteries are the rechargeable type, meaning they can store an infinite amount of energy. The factory starts by creating a model of the life cycle of a flashlight, showing its growth from birth to old age. This helps to inspire factory workers to remember why they do what they do. Batteries are made out of graphite, which conducts electricity. Silver catalyst, which helps the graphite with its homework. Manganese dioxide, which is wanted for sex crimes. Barium sulfate, which is lactose intolerant. Zinc, which was assaulted by the manganese dioxide. Anthrax, which helps keep the particle charges active. And finally, the Tears of the Last Unicorn. This 25-head press shapes the cathode's powered chemicals into hollowed pellets. What it doesn't do is give me a reason to live. Next, a machine called a Big Rolly Curvy Wavy Machine inserts three pellets into the round tubey metally things. Here it is in slow motion, which probably doesn't matter, since 90% of you aren't following what's going on anyway. The consoles are passed into a large machine that carves grooves on the top to help seal it, and so customers can store snacks in there just in case they get hungry. The next machine adds the chemical batter to the console which is where the batter in the word batteries comes from. Next, they cut a strip of receipt paper. This paper, placed inside the battery's casing, will have the specifications and return info for the batteries. This is convenient for the customer, who just needs to break open any of their batteries and retrieve the receipt should they want a refund. Now, the RE, which is concentrated power, is injected into the tube. This is where the RE in the word batteries comes from. The consoles are taken to a queue, where they get to experience the joys of waiting in line but at a fast pace, representing the speed difference between man and machine. The next machine injects the S. This is where the S in batteries comes from. Nozzles then inject a bit of cement into the batteries to help weigh them down so they don't float away. Don't believe me? Check it out. Footage of liquid cement. There. Now don't you feel stupid? Well, you should feel stupid because it's actually liquid zinc gel. I tricked you twice. A welding machine infuses nails onto the caps of the batteries to help connect the charge. This is where the, in the word, batteries, comes from. A machine tries desperately to attach the caps to the consoles, but many of them are suicidal, realizing their inevitable fate. So it's a difficult process. They are resistant to heat or pressure, but power surges can potentially disrupt the battery's contents. A hole is built into the battery so customers can suck out the contents and swallow them, so their stomach acid can dissolve them before they become radioactive. The batteries are passed under a crimping machine, which locks the caps into place. In an unrelated but interesting visual, here is an uncircumcised and a circumcised battery. An electrical testing machine connects each battery. Real batteries will provide a charge of one and a half volts, while fake batteries will never stop shouting, stop, stop, you're crushing my hand. Ah, uh, I'm a human, not a battery, let me out. Pfft, yeah, whatever you say, fake batteries. And finally, the labels are applied, because it'd be really weird if the metal already came perfectly pre-labeled. 